Terry, here we are, back on Zero Tackle. We're gonna go through our five ranked five World Cup squads. <whistles> Number five, who you got? Oh, Samoa. The dark horse or the competition? I got the dark horse, the competition there. Um, look, great back line, excellent forward pack. Jerome Luai, without Nathan Cleary, that's it for me. Fair call, but is maybe Mitch Moses for Lebanon aside, is he the best half outside the traditional big three? I would argue no other side outside of the big three has a half as good as him. Yeah, look, fair, outside Mitch Moses as well, I think, yeah. that's You're probably looking at that, but it's going to be interesting to see how he is without that Penrith team because we've seen Jerome Luai play for Penrith without Cleary. It'll be interesting to see how he goes now. He's still got a fantastic back line. I just, I've got them just outside. I think England beats them. I think that's fair call. I think Samoa get England this week to open in the competition. You know, I don't think being at home will mean that much. I think the Samoan forward pack is just ridiculously good. I have them a bit higher than five, but for the purpose of this, fifth is good. Number four, my Poms. The home side. The home side. The English. Mate, I had a look, and I didn't recognise half the squad. Rubbish, you'll finish last. Yeah, no, we won't finish last. No, nah, it's a pretty good squad. The <laughs> forward pack's good. The halves are real good. And the halves, we don't have Johnny Lomax or Jackson Hastings. That's right. I thought Hastings was a little hard done by maybe the injury. Injury. Yeah, yeah he was He was telling people on Twitter the other day that it's, it's still the injury there. They didn't, want to, they didn't want a chance at all. Did well. England have the forward pack to go with the big boys, so? <laughs> well, I mean... It just depends what kind of competition and what, what you're going to get there. We've seen some smaller mobile packs be able to you know, tear away these these big packs. They'll finish on the side of the draw with Tonga uh, in the semi-finals because I think they're going to they'll, they'll beat Samara and get in there. That's going to be a mouth-watering game. I just don't think they'll uh, they'll get a, above Tonga. That's completely fair. I like the squad. It's real good. I just don't think they had the forwards to match it with the next team we're going to talk about. Which is Tonga, and they're my pick to get in the World Cup final. Completely fair. I think they're a superstar half away from bothering mm -hmm. the big two or three. Yeah, absolutely. The, and, I mean, people are saying, what about this player, what about that player? No, look, I'm glad Jerome Hughes didn't go and play for Samara. I'm glad he's playing for New Zealand. Um, you're right, they are a, a one player, just one player. And I don't think that player is Katoni Staggs. No, yeah, it's, it's a shame him. he's missing out. I was yeah. really, it hurt to see that he wasn't there because I wanted him to come in and really show his worth for New South Wales moving forward. I think Lola here, I don't think he's quite up to, which is why we have them three. Their forward pack and back line though, oh my. Well, I think the, the half of the future for them is Katoa, who's signed from Penrith to go to the Dolphins. He's just too young to get in the squad at the moment. Completely fair. This is a side to watch, and it wouldn't shock me at all if they do make the final, as you said. So, good side, that. Number two, I don't know why we have Australia on here, because they are going to flog everyone by 25 points or more in this competition. Well, that's controversial. They will end up on the same side as New Zealand, and they'll do what they always do and batter them and go into the grand final and just absolutely fly. I don't know how they're number two, Dan. You wrote it down, not me. Tom Favoyevich, Payne Haas, two of the first players picked. Not there. Mm -hmm. Brian Toto, Josh Papali. Probably make the squad. I would argue the squad. They've said no, they're going to go play for their countries of origin, you know, their backgrounds, which I like. I'm well on record as saying that. I don't think the Australian side is quite as good as it could be. Yes, I think they're favourites. They should be. <laughs> that halves pairing is head and above all others. But I just don't think this is the strongest Australian side we've seen. Which it's is not the strongest Australian side, but it's stronger than everyone else by 30 points. Get out of here. I don't know how they weren't number one. Well, my number one side is New Zealand. I no. think they, 1 to 17, are the strongest side. No. I think the Kiwis have matched Australia. You know, don't forget they're the world number one, although it doesn't matter. Much yeah, it does. Days, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, and they've added. Australia are number four, mate. Yeah, Come true. on. Jerome Hughes. Arguably the best half in the world on his day. Mm -hmm. Dylan Brown, fantastic. Joe Manu is going to play fullback. Joseph Tarpany is the best forward in the world. He's going to run out for them. Fisher Harris is probably number two in terms of props. They're all Kiwis. This side, Brendan Smith's going to play hooker. Uh, no, it's not. Jerry Marshall King is. Uh, well, Brandon there Smith. you go. Well, Brendan Smith's going to come off the bench, play 13. This side is ridiculous. I don't think they're the favourites. I think on pure talent, though, this side, 1 to 17. Pips, even the Aussies. No, nah, Australia beat them by 25 and then go and just roll this. Like, it's embarrassing 
the amount of riches that Australia has, and they've sent their B squad over there to flog every one. It's over. World Cup.